just before we jumped on, you shared with me just how you've been reflecting on the Sermon on the Mount and this idea of integration um, and integrated life. And I just would love to hear some of those reflections before we sign off for today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, I know I'm not alone in this. Um, Through years of pastoral ministry, um, one of the main roles, whether it's a teaching role mainly or some teaching, but then also just a lot of personal spiritual guidance and shepherding, um, the, the scriptures are, are a key ingredient. They're a main vehicle of helping guide and shape people. And um, that's a very sacred and important role to be a mediator of the scriptures into the lives of people. Um, it also puts that person um, uh, it, it puts that communicator uh, in a delicate and vulnerable position um, be- because when I become a purveyor of biblical ideas, um, it, it happens very quickly that I outpace my actual personal growth and development. <laughs> mm. um, what I'm teaching is way over my skis, so to speak, of what I'm actually embodying in my own life. Um, and so it's just, it's inevitable and the issue will come up. <laughs> and so the question is, will I be aware of it? Um, will I be aware that what I'm calling my community to, and this is still happening with me, I'm create, helping create all the stuff that's telling the story and, you know, trying to lift our vision to the, what it means to live as the new humanity and followers of Jesus. And so I'll write a video or you teach a class or you give a sermon or you meet with somebody and you share with them something from scripture. And then if you allow yourself the moment of vulnerability, you'll realize that, um, yeah, that's, I totally have not integrated that into my own life very much or at all. Um, So I, I, what I realized a few years ago was I had reached that point yet again, but had, but also had developed all of these um, justifications Sure. For why I didn't need to pay attention to that sense of disintegration. And so uh, it, 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 it's happened on multiple fronts <laughs> um, with regard to, uh, I have lots of hangups about scarcity mentalities, especially around time hmm. uh, already, just in my temperament. Um, but I, I realized that I uh, had developed habits of extreme scarcity and selfishness about my time. Um, and I just had to, it was one of these moments where I'm like, I, my life doesn't actually reflect values that I see Jesus calling me to. Mm. And uh, I am not the person that I want to be. Um, it, uh, the current events, you know, in 2020 in America, both the, the pandemic and um, uh, the, the spotlight uh, on racial inequities that are woven in to Western culture in particular, to American culture. Uh, These have put spotlights on new areas of disintegration in my life um, that are really uncomfortable for me. Hmm. (laughs) Um, uh, But they're good. Uh, And they're they're forcing me to recognize um, some of my own life patterns and habits in how I operate and live in my own city. Um, How I relate to the houseless people Uh, who are around me, how I conceive of them and think about them in my heart and how I relate to them. Uh, I've had some pretty um, humbling and revealing moments that God's humbled me. (laughs) And, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's really not fun. Um, But what what I've come to... Uh, again, this is probably this is not going to be brand new to any of, of your listeners. Probably is just when you have those moments where you realize, like part this part of my life, I'm kind of propping up the an illusion of the kind of person yeah. I think I am, and then I realize, like, oh my gosh, I'm not that person. But I'm telling other people to be like that. Uh, those are not proud moments. No. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, you know, we all have you have just a couple responses. You either let down your guard and yeah. you invite other people in and say like, I need help with this area of disintegration. Um, and I need to form new habits 
that will make me and to form, lead me to become the kind of person that really embodies um, love of God and love of neighbor. And so, um, yeah, there you go. That's in a nutshell. It's a perennial issue for anyone in pastoral ministry, it seems to me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think the biggest takeaway for me was uh, in the last year, I've developed more intentionally a small network Mm. of people um, outside of my ministry work context. And I have not just given them permission, but like made them um, uh, be involved and more in, in interrogating in my life. Yeah. I just, I need them. I need their eyes on my life. Uh, Cause living that disintegrated kind of life for me is so draining and guilt ridden. And I know it, it's not the, the way Jesus, uh, what, what he has in store for us. So yeah, there you go. That, that's kind yeah. of, that's where Thanks I'm for at. sharing that. Yeah, absolutely.